Welcome to yet another special edition of Death Talker Metals. Prick up your ears. Hello, I'm Gary Grimm. This is part two of the interview series of Prick Up Your Ears that I'm doing for the end of 2020. Basically what it is, is I asked a bunch of mu metal musicians who uh, were behind some of my favorite metal releases of 2020 to come talk to me about, about the releases, about, about their favorite music from 2020, and just about uh, the, the frustration around COVID, all that kind of stuff. This is the second interview that I've done in this series. I've done four so far. That's probably just going to be the four. Uh, who knows? Maybe someone else will jump on board. We'll see what happens. These interviews are on Facebook. They're on YouTube. They'll probably be on Instagram or IGTV as well. Uh, it would do me a solid favor if you guys could subscribe to the Death to All By Metal YouTube channel. And if you want to be notified of the other interviews and videos that are coming up for Prick Up Your Ears, just hit the little bell next to the subscribe button and you'll get notifications when those things are happening. But without further ado, there's no more ado. We're, we're jumping straight into the interview here. Um, the, I'm sorry for the quality, uh, it's, it's pretty dark on my side of the video, uh, unless I figured out how to f fix that in the edit, I probably won't though, but you're not here to see me, you're here to see who I'm talking to, and in this video, I'm talking to the one and only James McBain from Scotland's very own Hell Ripper. Enjoy. So joining me now, all the way from Scotland, is the mastermind behind the band Hell Ripper, James McBain. Thank you so much for joining me, James. Thank you very much for having me on. Uh, man, congratulations on The Affair of the Poisons. It's easily one of my favorite albums of this uh, crazy year. Uh, was it written and recorded during a uh, like COVID isolation period? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, really glad you like it. Um, no, it was written, um, written and recorded last summer, uh, so summer of two thousand and nineteen, uh, until Christmas around that time. Um, we were planning an April release, April May release, originally, um, but. Of course, with everything that happened, both the label and I thought maybe it might be for the best to postpone it till later in the year, see what's happening. Maybe maybe everything would have been a lot better. I mean, it's, it isn't really, but um, I mean, no one knew exactly what was going on at the start of the year. So it was difficult to really, t really decide what to do. But yeah, it was recorded last summer last year so i've been waiting i've been waiting around a year for it to come out which is uh which is that's, annoying but. <laughs> yeah that's gonna be painful man having sitting on this uh album waiting to to be able to put it out there for people yeah man it's <laughs> it is what it is i mean well uh, it's it's out there now it's great it's, yeah. get, it's getting a lot of uh good attention um I really love the track, uh, the last track on the album, The Hanging Tree. It's kind of, you know, yeah. mid-paced, stompy, still heavy, but I, I feel like it's kind of a bit of a different direction for you. Was this a, an intentional thing, or is this part of, like, the natural evolution of Hell Ripper? Um, yeah, that one, it started off as that that start riff, the intro riff, the kind of dark throne uh, stompy kind of thing and yeah i thought it was it sounded different i'd never really done anything like that before like with hell ripper like your kind of yeah mid-paced stuff it's usually all fast um even though the song does go get faster <laughs> after a minute or so yeah but uh yeah it was yeah it was just something that kind of came naturally um i thought it was cool to have something a bit different there it's kind of a more black kind of thing at the start then into a kind of 
punk thing in the in the middle and then at the end again it's kind of more black metal with i tried to kind of bring in like influences from like merciful fate king diamond and stuff like that at the end like with the rhythm and the kind of more melodic solo and stuff mm-hmm. so i mean it, it it was a natural evolution but then it it became like an intentional thing i thought it was cool to have something different within the album Sure. Do you think we're going to see more of that kind of uh, uh, drawing from uh, the, those kind of influences in, in future releases? Uh, possibly. Um, I'm all I'm about halfway through the writing, almost done the writing for the next album. So um, I'm trying to think what I've got on the next album. It's I think it's again, the album's a bit thrashier, punkier feeling. I don't think there's much. I don't think there's like an outright slow song on this album or mid-tempo song so far. I mean, I could write another song in between now and like recording or the release, but yeah, I mean, anything can happen. If it comes to me like naturally, I don't really go out to try and do anything. I Usually everything comes like naturally to me and I don't really try and give things a certain feel. Otherwise it feels like I'm trying to force it, if you know what I mean. And yeah, it can come across as yeah, just yeah, fake. Um, so fake whatever or comes, contrived. To, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So it's just whatever comes to me. If it, if that kind of thing comes to me, then great. If not, then maybe the next album. Maybe the next album after that. I mean, yeah, I never know what what's really going to happen. Just whatever comes comes, <laughs> and, and you hear what's on the album. <laughs> Man, I'm really looking forward to hearing the the next album. Any kind of idea as to when we it might be um, coming out? Uh, no, not at all yet. I'm hoping I'm hoping to have it done, like fully recorded and everything by late summer or so. Um, so yeah, it could be a release f- between October and eight, like next April. Like, 22 or something that's my goal but you never know right now it's still kind of early in development but yeah once everything's written it's kind of a, a quick enough process um recording and because i don't have any deadlines and stuff i do take my time uh, so yeah no idea yet but i'm hoping around that time speaking of uh, the future i've seen that you for next year, you have a few kind of tentative uh, live performances uh, booked. Can you tell us a little bit about what a uh, Hell Ripper <laughs> live show is like and maybe tell us a little bit about your live band? Like, how did you meet and are they in other bands and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so, um, yeah, we've got a few shows, hopefully. Um, it's mainly festival shows, like, scattered throughout next year um yeah hopefully they go ahead um we've got no idea at the moment and we'd love to get back to like doing actual an actual tour or something but i don't know um but yeah hell ripper live show i mean it's basically the same as what you could expect on the record it's like it's punky we play fast songs it's not too i mean it's not overly theatrical or anything right now it's just kind of yeah, it's like a punk approach, I guess. Like, um, But yeah, the guys in the band, we've got, uh, at the moment, Clarky on bass, who he um, was in previous bands with me, and he's a good friend of mine. So I've known him for f- six years or so now. Um, on guitar, I've got Joseph, who is someone that played in like indie bands in, mm-hmm. in Aberdeen. And when I was looking for a new guitarist, I knew he liked, um, I'd seen him on Facebook, he had... He'd purchased Hell Ripper stuff before, and I like spoke to him a couple of times, and uh, I, I knew he liked Metallica and Motorhead and stuff. So I asked him because I didn't really know many other guitarists in my area. And I thought, I mean, he likes Metallica and Motorhead. I mean, that's basically ninety percent of Hell Ripper sound. So uh, <laughs> if he can play that kind of stuff, then I'm sure he'll be able to play Hell Ripper. But yeah, he's great uh, on guitar. And yeah, Max, who we've got right now on drums, he is he's actually based uh, down in Brighton, about 12, 13 hours away from me, which makes travel a nightmare. But yeah, he um, one of one of his friends 
saw a tweet. I had just tweeted randomly that I needed a drummer. And I thought it would be quite difficult to find a drummer. Um, so I put out a tweet and I don't know, within a couple of hours, one of his friends got him in touch with me. Yeah, it was far easier than I imagined. <laughs> it would be uh, getting a like another live band together. So, but yeah, every one of them are great musicians and they know what they're doing. And so, yeah, it's, I get along really well with them. And so it's, yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's fun to be in the live band. Like it's fun to play live with those guys. Sure. Uh, well, well, speaking of the of the live band uh, and and the future, uh, when international touring kicks off again, would you consider at all coming all the way to Australia? And are there any Australian metal bands in particular that you'd like to open for you? Uh, yeah, man, I'd, I'd love to come to Australia. Um, even just to visit, I want to come to Australia. But um, yeah, if if the opportunity comes if we can make it happen and then yeah that'd be great um but in terms of uh, australia metal bands yeah there's loads of bands i mean that i'm a fan of uh another one-man band called violence um he's he's really good kind of similar stuff to hell repair like the black speed thing um and bastardizer uh again ah. uh, bastardizer ridiculous black thrash killer band yeah, I know some of the guys in Bastardizer actually see him yeah. around at a lot of shows. Okay, and cool. I'm sh- I'm sure they'd love to play with uh, Hellripper, so that'd be yeah, awesome. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be killer. I've been a fan since uh, the first album, so yeah, that'd be killer. Hellripper, I discovered with uh, Coagulating Darkness, uh, but it seems with every release, with the splits and the EP since then, and now <laughs> the affair of the poisons. And signing to peace, Phil, all this kind of stuff. The fan base just keeps growing and growing. But besides Iron Claw and Hellripper, I haven't really heard of any other metal bands from Scotland. So just wanted to know what the scene is like there and what it's like to kind of gain more and more not- notoriety internationally when when coming from like a, a kind of closed off scene like that. Yeah, I mean... Um... The scene in Scotland, over the past couple of years at least, has been really growing in terms of like the thrash and kind of extreme metal. Um, there's a lot of bands. You've got bands like uh, Disposable, Vool, fuck, I can't even think, Bulk, um, Wound. I'll try to think off the top of my head. Absolutely lost. Uh, Tommy Concrete, he's doing loads of cool shit. Um, but yeah, um, the scene is like growing, but it's kind of more based in like Edinburgh and Glasgow right um that's where all the the majority of shows happen that's where most of your touring metal bands from elsewhere will come to and stuff so the scene's like quite active there um me I'm based three four hours away from those places so I'm not as involved in the scene as I'd like to be because it just make is yeah, it's just difficult to travel. Um, there's like one train per day. So yeah, I'm not in, as involved in the scene like directly as I wish I was. Like I can't go to as many shows and stuff. But yeah, the scene is growing. But in terms of like becoming popular and gaining notoriety and whatever, yeah, Hellripper, it was never, it was a, it started off kind of as an international thing, which is, which, which was strange to me, like I didn't expect that to happen. I thought Hellripper would be like, gain some fans in my local scene up in Aberdeen when I lived there five, six years ago. But the main interest like came from like, there's a massive old school metal, black thrash, metal punk community uh, everywhere. Like the first interest I got was from places like Indonesia, um, the US as well and um like brazil south america and stuff like that so yeah the majority of fans it's not until actually recently that i'm getting a lot of a lot more uk fans and um, the majority of my fan base is made up from like europe and uh, north and south america judging by like online statistics like facebook and all that and so yeah i it kind of took a weird path like 
it went to my local scene after it went elsewhere. So yeah, I that me- that method is strange compared to the usual path you would follow. <laughs> So that must be pretty wild, man, just uh, it exploding like that all over the world. And kind of, do do you think the DIY approach uh, worked in your favor in that respect? Um, Yeah, I think so. Um, it, It allowed me to put out a lot of things like very quickly at the start. So like, my name was like the the band name was kind of out there for a solid year like doing stuff in the underground um i think i released three splits and uh, two splits in two, uh, 2015 as well as the first ep so it was kind of like a constant reminder that i was there and that was because i was able to record write do everything immediately and when i was finished i could release it i didn't have to book ske- uh, schedule studio time or rely on other people's schedules and things like that so in that respect i think yeah it made it easier just to constantly kind of put things out and and all that the black thrash scene and stuff metal punk scene is is quite diy based as well Uh, so i think everyone is kind of in a similar situation maybe they don't record all the instruments themselves but everything else is kind of DIY type stuff, even the shows and stuff. So yeah, I think being DIY definitely helps in that respect. Uh, and I can see on your shelves in the back there all the merch as well. Yeah. As well. <laughs> that's yeah. your real DIY there. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the, this is the merch and studio room. So everything oh, awesome. Hellripper happens in here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so speaking of putting stuff out there, 2020, uh, metal releases, <laughs> I was just wanted to ask you what is one or a couple of your, your favorite releases from 2020 in the, in the realm of metal? Yeah. Um, of course, uh, Midnight Rebirth by Blasphemy. That's uh, one of my yes. favorites. Um, um, 2020 has been such like a, a long year. I forget what's been like released this year or last year. Um, Butcher, 666 Goats. Yes. Uh, Carrot, Carrot, that's a killer album. Um, the new Warbringer album was great. Um, fuck, what else was there? I can't even think of what else was released. Uh, the new Black Evil and the new Hexecutor um, albums. They were released a couple of months ago. Um and yeah, I, th- I believe it was this year that Wraith and Bastardizer done a split. I think it was this oh. year. Was it this year or was it late last year? I, I've literally lost all track of time this year. But <laughs> I'm pretty sure if, if that was this year, then that one <laughs> as well. Um, but yeah, there's probably a lot more that I just I can't think of right now. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you for sh- sharing those with me. Thank you for your time and nope. uh, taking the time for the interview. James McBain from Hell Ripper. Thank you very much.